in Malaysia right now, our motoring market has been hit with shock waves. I'll use the word shock waves because there's a sudden surge in uh, new Chinese car brands coming in. When I say Chinese, I'm talking about made in China. Now, that made in China word, until seven years ago, until seven years ago, made in China, cars, motorcycles, uh, trucks, anything that is, you know, in terms of mobility, was frowned upon. Only a small handful would, would invest. There were commercial vehicles coming in, vans, small pickup trucks, uh, prime movers also, some three-ton lorry, five-ton lorry, some excavators and all that, coming in for the construction industry. They were very cheap, very reasonably priced. So people will buy them and then use them and then say, okay, after that, I scrap them. Lah. So it was not the best of times. Lah. But when it came to the normal consumer, the man on the street who wants a car, motorcycle, SUV, van, when you talk about made in China, before seven years ago, no way. No one will look at it. If there was anyone, so it's just a very small number, very small number, insignificant, and it ended up failing. The brand will just close shop and go. So a lot of them came in a year, two years. Some had local partnerships. Some tried on their own. Uh, all failed. But seven years ago, why I keep saying seven, year, seven years ago? Because seven years ago, our national car company, Proton, sold 59% to Geely, big, big, powerful uh, Chinese automobile company. Now, when Geely took over, Geely was already established globally. Because why? Geely had already invested in Volvo, a huge company, and very successful with their XC90. That was their first major project. They did very well. So when Geely came to Malaysia and said, oh, we want part of Proton, Proton said, yes, why not? We were not doing so well. We lack partnership. We lack enthusiasm. New products were not happening. But there was a lot of loyalty for Proton. But with Geely coming in, boom, they brought in a car called the X70. That X70 changed the entire landscape. Why? It sold like hotcakes. It was an SUV that was accepted across the board. Race, religion, earning power, age, everybody who was anybody was interested in the next 70. They sold so many. In fact, they sold so many that the competition from Japan was like, whoa, what's happening here? And then they brought in the X50, another fantastic selling product. And then now they got the X90 and the S70 sedan. But it was the X70 seven years ago that changed the whole mindset for made-in-China vehicles in Malaysia. Now, Geely enjoyed fantastic sales. Proton enjoyed fantastic sales. There was a rebirth of the brand as such. New dealers opened up. Sales were booming. Profits were coming in. Tanjung Malim factory was running. And nobody doubted a made-in-China product. Then what happened? Last year, actually the year before, but it was last year, after COVID, one year after COVID, when the markets were opening up, then you started seeing other Chinese car brands coming to Malaysia. It started slow. It started with just, you know, one model, two models. Today, you have, you know, by end of this year, you'll have a dozen Chinese car brands in Malaysia selling nearly everything, including this Great Wall Moto Tank 300 uh, uh, SUV. You, you got compact cars, electric cars, of course. You got midsize, performance, sports. You got crossovers. You got SUVs. You have a bunch of uh, pickup trucks also coming in this year. You got, um, you name it, like, basically, you name it. They've got all the segments covered except the super premium segment. And their prices are so reasonable, so inviting. Even for non-electric vehicles who pay full tax, their prices are so inviting that Malaysians are willing to, not, not all, but some Malaysians are willing to say, I don't need a premium European product anymore. 
I'll buy something made in China. And that's the big shocker because it's like, it's like someone coming telling you, I don't want an Italian designer handbag. I'll buy something that's made in China. I don't want a Swiss premium wristwatch. I'll buy something made in China. And this change in attitude for made in China vehicles is going to continue because these brands have set up factories, spent millions. Some of them even have gone as far as saying, we're going to spend a billion, not one. Two of them have already committed a billion ringgit in factories, dealerships, product and more. And they're bringing it to Malaysia with full force. So made in China is now the darling of the automotive industry right now. And this is going to get very interesting in the following years. Thank you.